Hi everybody, Chris Doherty here, technical editor for the RV Travel Channel and the Green RV Project. Now part of being able to boondock is being able to renew our energy source, which is going to be our battery bank. So we need to have uh, some green energy to put in there. And to do that in this uh, particular case is going to be solar panels. Now here we have a 135 watt uh, solar panel, which has been provided by Grape Solar. And this is really a great unit. Uh, with We're gonna install two of these in our coach. And I'll turn the unit around here so that you can see the back of it and see what it looks like. And so you have your frame here, which you're gonna use for your mounts. Now there's a, a few different types of mounts that you can get out there uh, to mount this on an RV. They don't include mounts here. You have to go to amazon.com. You can find the mounts on there and pick the ones that you wanna get. Uh, it uses the standard uh, industry solar panel connections. So when you're going to put a solar panel uh, system together like this, you have to be able to do a couple of things. Uh, you're gonna have to buy the proper cable for it, and you're going to have to buy these types of plugs and the crimp tool that goes with them so that you'll be able to run, them, run the cables from the solar panels, uh, put the panels together, run the cable down to your charger, and then from the charger to the battery bank. Deciding on the size of a battery bank and solar system is an involved process, which we don't have time to completely cover here. However, we can give you some points to consider, and there are some links to more detailed solar education and solar sizing calculators in the description area of this YouTube video. To size the system, you have to know how much amperage you will be using. For the Green RV project, we started with a basic design we could expand upon later. So considering what your ideal and minimum requirements will be is important. A few rules of thumb to consider. First, batteries deliver a usable 80% of their rated capacity. This is important to keep in mind for total amp and battery requirements. Second, solar panels are not 100% efficient, and depending on a number of environmental and mounting factors can be substantially less. Factors include ambient and solar cell temperature, amount of 100% sunlight during the day, the length of daylight, the angle of the panel, shade and cloud cover, and so on. Next, wiring matters. Remember that length of wire runs and every connection results in some power loss. So using the right cable and the right connections will reduce this loss. In low voltage applications, a small amount of loss can make the system much less effective. Not all solar panels are usable in a mobile or RV environment, so be sure to verify the panels you are using are appropriate for RV use. Often they will have an RV use listed as an application, or you can contact the manufacturer to verify your use. Like batteries, solar panels can be wired in series or parallel. For this project, we are wiring them in a parallel configuration, which is best for RV use. Considering that some panels can be shaded by trees on campsites while others may have full sun, this will allow those panels to operate at peak efficiency and providing the most charge. In our case, we're using the two Grape Solar 135 watt panels. Operating at a maximum of 17.5 volts DC, we'll have a maximum of 270 watts of solar capacity with this installation. As we are not full-timing and will use the coach only occasionally at this point, we are okay with this amount of capacity, but again, it is easily expanded later on should we wish to do so. These panels are only one part of the system. Other items you will need include, but aren't limited to, PV or photovoltaic type 10 gauge wire to do the entire installation. PV wire is sunlight and UV and weather resistant and works with the crimp style connectors that allow easy connection and later expansion of your photovoltaic system. The 900 millimeter MC4 solar connectors, one lead for positive and one for negative, these connectors click together and are male and female to design your cabling system so you can't cross connect the leads. The connectors crimp together with a special crimp tool for your wiring harnesses. Branch connectors allow combining of leads from multiple panels. Hardware for installation, including brackets, screws, clamshell, sealants, junction boxes, cable stays, circuit protection, terminals, and so on. And lastly, your charge controller. A charge controller regulates the amount of power being sent to the battery bank. There are a number of different types available, 
Most common today are PWM, or Pulse Width Modulation Controllers, and MPPT, or Maximum Power Point Tracker Controllers. PWM have been the most common, are the least expensive, and work well for small systems like ours. PWM chargers send a variable amount of charge to the batteries depending on how much charge the batteries need, instead of the old switch style chargers that simply turn the voltage on or off. PWM controllers send power directly from the array to the batteries. MPPT, which is the latest technology, optimizes power transfer from the panels to the batteries by using a transformer to step down the voltage and increase the current being sent to the battery bank. And therefore, it can intelligently overcome some of the losses common in photovoltaic systems. While tending to be more expensive, MPPT is a better system than PWM. If you're going to wire your system in series, then an MPPT controller is definitely the one for you. The controller we are using for the Green RV project is the Coleman 68032 30 amp controller which we selected from Amazon.com and is a PWM style controller. It can handle 17 to 22 volts DC input from the panels and up to 450 watts of power which gives us some expansion room. This is a cabinet mounted controller with LCD display which we liked because of the information it provides which includes system voltage, charging amps, and LED indicators which show if solar power is available, the battery state of charge, and a charge mode indicator showing whether the charger is in bulk or float mode. While there are pre-made PV cables available on the market that have the ends already attached, we opted to purchase bulk wire ends and the crimp tool to make the ends. Remember that length plays a big part in power loss, which we didn't want to have happen. This way we custom make each cable to the length we need, eliminating some of the loss. Preparing the panels was easy. We installed the panel brackets we selected while still on the ground so the panels would be ready to install once we had them up on the roof. Inside we disassembled the kitchen cabinetry as needed and removed the microwave to gain access to where we would be installing the controller and running cable. We drilled up through the roof here to run the cable down from the panels. Using a roto zip, we cut holes in the cabinet end for the various panels we were installing after having spent some time deciding on the layout. Mounting the panels on the roof is a pretty straightforward operation. In this case, we made sure the forward facing brackets were screwed into structure, the rear brackets were screwed to the roof decking, but all were sealed with butyl and lap sealant so the panels weren't going anywhere. The cabling was arranged on the roof to keep the install as organized as possible. Using cable stays about every 16 inches for security. The cables were run together and the remaining two cables, positive and negative, were run down through the roof. Sealant added and the clamshell screwed down facing away from the front of the coach. We installed circuit protection, the connections were made at the controller and at the batteries, and we're done. This has been a basic overview of PV systems for RVs. If you require a really high amperage system, You'll have more work to do, different wiring, more batteries, etc., with the main restriction being what you can physically attach to your RV, both in roof dimension and free space, and weight and storage space concerns for the battery bank. In our installation, each panel weighs 23 pounds, so with the cable and the controller, we've added 55 pounds to the coach. Each Trojan T105 battery that we installed during the last episode was 62 pounds, so that's 124 pounds for the two. For more information on Grape Solar's products, visit them online at www.grapesolar.com. There's some great information there. Also, there are a number of other educational resources available, and again, we've linked to them in the description for this video.